Okay, so I, I think this talk follows on really nicely from a lot of the other talks that we've heard today. Um, in particular, the Ken Robinson talk. So I remember when I was little, you know, kids draw these heads just with legs on them. My mom always used to say to me, David, you're not just a head on legs. You know, you can't just be like that in life. You have to do other stuff. And the other thing Ken Robinson said, which is relevant, is he said that he's never seen a place, uh, an educational system, where they fuse mathematics and dance. So I, I think we actually cracked that problem. So. Um, <laughs> Yeah, great, let me tell you about it. So um, this, the talk fits nicely as well into the talks that we've, we've heard because it, we've heard about the global macro societal scale and we've also heard about um, the sort of Mervyn Miles and nanoscale stuff. And what I'm about to tell you, we've actually found a way to, to sort of marry these two together in a, in a way that I, I would argue is playful. And so this project really started um, from me and some friends wanting to, you know, do some stuff and I thought, well, no one understands what the heck I do for a living. I do my research in theoretical qu molecular quantum mechanics and, uh, I mean, that's a way to stop conversation at a, <laughs> any sort of gathering. There was a time when I was a young, enthusiastic PhD student. When I was starting out, I loved explaining it to people. Now I just say, let's talk about you. Um, <laughs> so, um, yeah, effectively. So I thought, oh great, I'm going to start an art project. My mom, my girlfriend, everyone's going to understand what the molecular world is and how great it is. So the first thing I did was give it a name no one can pronounce. Which, um, I mean, absolutely no one can pronounce. Lee is a musician working on it. There's another artist working on it with me, Phil. When they're sober, they can just about pronounce it. But uh, yeah, I mean, case in point, we have a spectroscopist here and she, you know, it's been a while. <laughs> so. Um, so let me tell you what spectroscopy is. Spectroscopy is the use of light to obtain information about matter. And it's something no one knows about, but it's actually something that people should know about. And the reason people should know about it is because we have two little spectrometers that we walk around and use every single day, okay? And they're called your eyes. And they're extremely highly evolved. But the, the, the problem with your eyes, if you want to see what's going on on the molecular level, is that they don't see things fast enough. And they only see a tiny little fraction of the light that's actually available, right? There's a massive, huge range of light. We only see a tiny little fraction. And so if you want to see what molecules are doing, what the subatomic nano world is doing, you've got to use different tools, okay? So what if we could, what if we could see what the molecular world was doing? What would it look like? And so here I have for you um, a simulation. This is diamond. Okay, and so I've done a, this is a rigorous quantum mechanics simulation of a diamond matrix. So now diamond's one of the, the hardest substances that we know about. And so you might think, right, it's really hard, so it just doesn't move. If you zoom in on what diamond is actually doing on the femtosecond time scale extremely fast, and you actually look at the individual atoms that, that uh, Mervyn was talking about, you see this complex choreographed dance where every single atom in that simulation is reacting in real time to what every single other atom is doing, and it's creating this intricate choreography that happens at the molecular scale. And this is what I do for a living as I study this kind of stuff, all right? Um, and so the, the people that study this kind of stuff talk about energy landscapes. And they talk about how an atom or a molecule moves. They talk about an energy landscape. And an energy landscape is effectively all the sum of the forces that every single individual atom in the system feels. And a good, to a first approximation, it's not such a bad idea to think about an energy landscape in the way that you think about a landscape that you would move through. So if you're walking down the street in a congested traffic network, you're going to be going slow and chaotically. And if you're walking in a smooth area that's open, you're going to go fast and smooth. If you're going up a hill, you go slow. If you're going down a hill, you go fast. And atoms, to a first approximation, do the same thing. And so I want to drive home this idea of, 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 of what a, um, uh, a, an energy landscape looks like. So I, energy landscapes, I have a simple energy landscape drawing here, a very simple one where the arrows indicate what some atoms could do on this landscape. And it looks like a map you might look at when you go walk in the hills, right? In real life, these things are highly dimensional and you can't make nice pretty graphs, but these are for some simple systems. Here you have a more complicated system for a protein or something like that where the green indicates the trajectory that an atom took as it wandered around this path, okay? And so what we've effectively done is we've We've got, we've got a way, so the way that atoms work is they, um, the way they work is they move around and they feel all the other atoms, okay? And so what we've done in this project is I have here, I'm solving quantum mechanical equations of motion in real time. It's something, if anyone's interested, it's called a path integral formulation of quantum mechanics, all right? It's, I was going to try to explain this talk, but he only gave me 10 minutes, so I don't have time, all right? <laughs> 
So all the particles are little blurred out wave packets. And what's happening in the simulation is every single particle is feeling every single other particle. So the energy landscape is solely the particle landscape. Okay? And so um, what happens is when I now step into the field of the simulation, the particles feel me as the energy landscape. And so what you're going to see is when I step into the field, the particles are going to dynamically assemble around me, right? And so I have some attractors, I have some repellers. It responds to me in real time. And then the musician that I'm working with here, um, he uses some tricks from a field of physics called statistical mechanics. And he actually decomposes all the chaos of the collision dynamics into the sounds you're hearing. You create these really tripped out ambient landscapes, OK? So now I've shown you just what happens here with one person, me. Yeah, I'm just going to show you about two minutes of videos of what happens when you deploy this on a larger scale. So we put it in art exhibitions and all sorts of other places that are more interesting than me just wiggling around up here, OK? So just give us a second while we switch over. Oh, uh, yeah. So you can make shock waves and you can capture the particles. You can actually learn about mechanics here. If you capture them, they'll eventually escape from you because it's actually a quantum transmission probability. So it's kind of interesting. OK? <laughs> uh, so let me just show you um, some of these videos here. All right. And so the sounds you're going to be hearing are all generated from the particle dynamics. So these are some workshops we did with some professional dancers where we hooked them up to this kit in ideal situations. And you see it's extremely beautiful. And the, the, the real dancers, people that are good at moving can do really cool stuff that we didn't even know we could do. So you have a dancer in the foreground, you have a group of dancers laying down, and now they're, they're working on energy, tr on transferring the quantum particles between the two bands of people. Okay, and what, if you look at the upper left hand corner, she's gonna, can we get a little more sound on there? You're going to grab the particle up in the upper right hand corner. Okay, now the next one you're going to see is of some swing dancers. Okay. So here's some swing dancers at our exhibition in the Arnolfinia. And I want you to watch as the swing dancers move the beauty of how the particles chase them around. Okay, it's really, I spent way too much time. Watch the swing dancers here. We got quantum swing dance. I mean, who would have guessed, right? <laughs> okay, the next thing you're going to see is you're going to see a 30 second clip of a circle that the dancers made. So, again, they were working on energy transfer. So, one of the most interesting things that the dancers were telling us was that this technology really liberated them from their bodies. Because they're not a body, they're just a force field perturbation. So you see, they're transferring things. And then the final video is big groups of people at the art museum doing interesting stuff that they figured out all their own. And you can see the quantum transition. Look at when they come together, you see the quantum transmission probabilities. Watch, little particles will fly out. Watch what happens here. minute mark and that is absolutely perfect because I am just about finished here. So yeah, anyway, I was going to leave this up for people to play around with. I probably could, so if anyone wants to come see afterward, I'll just let it go and you feel free to step into it. Last slide. Um, so effectively, we've, we've made a project where human bodies now become energy landscapes. And they're fluctuations in a force field. And, and I think the key point is they're fluctuations in a force field just like every single elemental force in nature. 
No better, no worse, just the same. And uh, that's how humans impact the microscopic world. So we've heard of all these big issues, climate change, you know, pollution. I mean, a lot of the havoc that gets wreaked in these things on the globe it happens at the microscopic level. So people's ingraining how they impact the microscopic level in their everyday lives is going to be increasingly important for whatever the hell happens to us as humans. And the other thing is we observe really stunning behavior. We're strangers in the art museum, liberated from their bodies, can't identify themselves in their force field perturbation. All this starts, like, they start being nice to people and like holding hands and <laughs> doing twirly spirals and stuff. And, <laughs> and then it lasts like five minutes, and then you see a fluctuation of amazing stuff, and then it dissipates. And so I think there's something to learn there. If we can start, learn how to harness, I, so I guess I'm closing with a similar question as the Arvin guys, is how can we harness technology to sort of drive the individual and collective awareness for answering the global and societal challenges that, that you know, we have to start dealing with. That's, that's what I want to close on, so thanks for listening.